Space. Stars. A foreign planet unknown to man in the farthest parts of the galaxy. This is not reality, but a video game called Spore. Spore is a game where players are able to evolve from cells to creatures to a sophisticated intelligent society. The game itself is complex. Later stages have you interacting with other societies and exploring space. Our journey is set in the creature stage. This video game was designed to simulate evolution. Still, many scientists have researched the scientific accuracy of the way it is presented to see whether or not this game could be a helpful asset to students and researchers in the field of ecology. So, is it an accurate representation of how evolution actually works? The graphics of the game have aged with time, as Spore came out in 2008. Regardless, levels themselves provide a lot the player can do. The cell stage is the first stage of the game, and by far the easiest and shortest. You play a simple microbe in a 2D space, where you're able to level up by either eating meat or plants, deciding later on whether you are a carnivore or herbivore. If you eat both, you become an omnivore. While eating, you have to run away from other organisms and are also able to kill others and consume the meat they leave behind. The more food you consume, the more upgrades you gain, being able to add spikes or different traits and features to your organism. Some of these are purely aesthetic or made to please the player, but some offer unique advantages, like being able to move faster, even be able to spit poison. While there are many inaccuracies in how single cell organisms actually behave, our topic today is the next stage. The creature stage is where your organism has evolved to walk on land. An animation plays where the brain of the creature is shown to grow and become more intelligent. The purpose of progressing through each level is to become smarter which is not exactly accurate to how organisms behave in real life. Organisms don't have the purpose of becoming more intelligent. Their primal purpose is to reproduce, and whichever traits allow them to do this more efficiently is often preferred. The fitness of an organism is how effectively it is able to have offspring and able to live long enough to accomplish this. In the game, all the traits of the player's organism are decided by the player themselves. These traits may make the creature less likely to survive, but the decision of whether or not they keep the traits are up to the player. Survival of the fittest does not apply to the player's creature. Each change and upgrade can be made when their creature mates with another mate of the same species and lays offspring. This process is somewhat accurate as mutations often occur randomly to offspring which can result in different traits than their parents. The changes themselves, however, are decided by the player. Mutations in actuality are random and can either be helpful to the fitness of an organism, harmful, or passive. When a trait is helpful to the fitness of an organism, it will likely spread to their offspring and if it is harmful, it is likely that the organism will not be able to reproduce to pass on their genes. The player being able to get upgrades from collecting fossils and using them to change the way the creature looks and its traits is inaccurate to how mutation actually works. Mutation and changes to traits in a species occurs slowly, often taking hundreds of thousands of years, and speciation itself taking millions of years. But what is speciation? As stated by National Geographic, speciation occurs when a group within a species separates from other members of its species and develops its own unique characteristics. The demands of a different environment or the characteristics of the members of the new group will differentiate the new species from their ancestors. Speciation occurs when prezygotic barriers are present between populations. From barriers such as habitat isolation, where populations living in different habitats are less likely to encounter each other, to mechanical isolation, where their reproductive organs are not compatible. Sometimes mutation takes place in populations, and they have a prezygotic barrier. This is how you get different traits and differing species which stem from the same ancestor on the phylogenic tree. In the game Spore, however, all the other species you interact with are not at all related to each other. Even in your own species, random mutations don't occur, and all the changes you make to your creature result in the changes in the rest of the populations, making them all look the same, the only difference being the age and size. While there are many gross oversimplifications or even unrealistic aspects to the game of Spore, a general look at the game is interesting. It's easy to understand mechanics, allow for a surprisingly fun experience where the player can play in whatever style they choose. Still, there are too many broken laws in the science behind the game to justify using it as a learning tool.